Okay, welcome to the next talk. Um, I wanted to do uh, mostly a presentation talk this year because last year I had uh, too much slides and uh, I made the experience that I uh, profited a lot from someone showing tips in writer and stuff like that and I use them up to today. So I decided to just show what is in draw impress today and what you can do. And maybe uh, you can see some tools and, and uh, things to process your graphics which you um, didn't know about. So let's see. So uh, first, graphic objects, what application offers what? Uh, so I don't know um, if everybody knows Draw and, draw and Impress is uh, pretty much, it is the same application. So in principle, all functionality is available in both of them. Um, it's just a question of configuration. So by purpose, uh, to reduce the UI for presentation program, a lot of the functionality which is available is hidden in the Impress program, but it's the same uh, binary which is executed. It's just a question of configuration. So um, it's different with Writer and Calc they both use uh, the same internal drawing layer stuff, but in different ways. Um, and this ensures that all graphic objects can be copy pasted and inserted without loss of quality. But to uh, work on them geometrically, to do changes, to do uh, bigger changes, it's always better to copy paste them in draw, mostly draw, because draw has the most uh, advanced function set to do stuff with graphic objects. Um, Writer, in the meantime, has the same uh, fill style, line style set like graphic objects. This was a big change, and um, we try to work in the direction to offer this general set everywhere, but it's just for fill style. Um, So Draw Empress has a lot of advanced features. It's, it's uh, really uh, not very well known, but you can do things that uh, our competitors can really not do. You can, you can really deeply change uh, the graphics. You can edit the curves. You can add and subtract objects. You can create new graphics quite nicely. So this functionality is mostly quite hidden. Uh, uh, draw is not used too much, which is uh, sad, but maybe you use it more after this. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, and often it's not very intuitive, and the reason is that most of the stuff is quite old and didn't age very good over, over the years. So um, one, one question which comes up is, do we need uh, something like draw at all? Because uh, we have external editors and we could just edit externally and uh, insert the graphics and on double click you, you could edit in an external program. But it's a hard question to answer. So uh, we have everything in one system currently and it works pretty well. The question is just should it be offered more intuitively to, to make it more accessible? So, uh, to make it easier to find that stuff. Uh, and Björn said two days ago to me, it's hard to identify and implement useful new features today because the office has a lot of features. Even when they are sometimes well hidden and hard to find. So, the big advantage is all these features I want to show today are already implemented and realize in the file formats, get, oh, get saved and loaded and all that stuff. So the most work for new features normally is to get it adapted to the file formats, to all the external file formats and all that stuff. And this stuff we internally already have is all there. So maybe it's worth to just work on the interactions and on the implementations to offer it more intuitively. Then we would maybe be able to 
show out and sell old features as new features. <laughs> this would be really nice. So, uh, now I will uh, just, oh. Just sit down because the rest, the rest will be uh, demonstration work. Um, oops, back. So let's let's see. I will go through the examples, and of course you can ask questions. But um, the less breaks we have, the more I can show. So I will just start. So. Uh, for something similar, just tips and tricks, object selection and set order, for example. Oops. You all know you can click objects to select them. You can use Control A to select all of them. You can use a mouse select, to select objects. You know how to travel with Tab and Control Tab, no, Shift Tab. Uh, but there's more to it. When you, for example, select all objects, you cannot really see how many are selected. Are they all selected? And there's always this nice tip on the bottom left where you can see what the selection is made about. And you can use shift and click on some and see now only 13 are selected. And you can move them to see which are selected, or you can use the point mode, which is triggered by F8 to get the handles for control. So uh, this is a fast uh, trick for seeing what selection you have. Makes things much more easy in, in some cases. So uh, often asked question how to select covered objects. So for example this, when you, when you think about the objects behind the selected one are really completely covered. Uh, many people think uh, you have a problem and cannot do that, but in principle it's very easy, but it's hidden in the, in the Alt key. You just need to press the Alt key, and when you continue clicking, you get the next object, which, which is behind the object. And with Shift-Alt, you can go back in the hierarchy. So, so easy, but so hard to find. Uh, the arrange toolbar, for example, you can you can just make a new drawing, and I will just create some some objects to have something to work with. Uh, oh, it's not shown. Sometimes it's not shown. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, uh, the office just doesn't do what I want. Let's do it here. <laughs> uh, with the arranged toolbar. Uh, so it's actually really hidden that you can find it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a really yeah. secret feature. <laughs> yeah, it's much, much too hidden. A uh, lot of the stuff is much, much too hidden. Uh, so we, we, sh we should simply really think about UI advance, advancements. So um, uh, let, let's take this one, that's much better. Uh, For example, uh, you can use the range toolbar to move your object to the back, or move it to the front, or completely to the front, or the back. But interesting stuff like, like this buttons is rarely used, but it's very, very uh, helpful. For example, in front of object gives you uh, the full interaction with highlighting of the object which you want uh, your selected object to have in front of. And you get there with one click, or behind this one, very easy. Uh, and 
also a very mighty feature which helps you to arrange your stuff, but also very hard to find, unfortunately. Um, then uh, curve tools, uh, just just overviews here. Uh, I think it's partially uh, documented, but uh, I, I think the, the best we could do to make uh, this stuff more well known is really to to make some to do videos or something. I, I don't really know. I, I just want to demonstrate, and then I hope a lot of people get ideas how to better make this known, because we have a lot of interesting stuff which is which is not really used too much. So, for example. Uh, curve, oops. Uh, curve, you can go to the curve tool again. It's also possible with, with this button here up. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure how many people know that you can uh, completely uh, work with the keyboard with curves. For example, uh, you start with control tab and you get the first point selected and control tab to the next and stuff like that. Ooh, this. Bad repaint error. <laughs> and uh, this even works with the control points. So you can completely work on your curves uh, with the keyboard if you want. And you have uh, very, very mighty stuff. Uh, you can also just select, for example, two points of the curve with the keyboard and move the two points. All possible. And what key are you pressing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I press control tab and control shift tab and to select the point I'm hovering over, I'm using the, um, the uh, space key. And when you don't want to deselect the currently selected point, you'll use the shift space key. So uh, it's more or less a, log logic a logical stack of, se of selection, um, but hard to know when you've never seen it. <laughs> so really, really difficult. Uh, you, you can do stuff like uh, insert points anywhere, anytime. So this is maybe more known. Uh, you, you can, uh, of course, delete points, split the curve. You, you can change the uh, curve control points from no continuity to C1 and C2 continuity. You can close the stuff. You can, when you select all of the points, you can, uh, uh, where is it? convert back to a simple polygon without curves, and then you can use the delete point tool. Also very interesting. Uh, all right. So uh, you interactively get, get a snapping hint where is the position where your point would be deleted. So you can interactively delete your points. So all nice games, are but very hidden. Yeah, maybe I can I can I can give this presentation to him in private again. So maybe, maybe. so I, I can I can show tips and tricks to everyone uh, which is interested uh, uh, afterwards or the next days. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, I, I'm just giving an overview here because there are so many of these scams. So uh, let's just go further. <laughs> so color bar. You you may have seen this this control on the right. Uh, this is just a few toolbars. Uh, color bar is a very old tool, more or less, but but it has some very interesting uh, functionality. You can, for example, uh, let's take some line widths. You can change uh, the fill style with one click. And the good thing is you can also switch off the fill style with one click. 
And with the right click in the tool, you can change the line color and switch off the line fill style. So very intuitive and very easy to use. Uh, and it goes even further. You can drag and drop the color. So fascinating stuff nobody knows about. <laughs> So, alignment toolbar and distribution. Let's again uh, do some objects. For example, I'm just holding the uh, control key, and when you drag objects and hold the control key, when you uh, let them down, you get a copy of the object. Did you know that? Good. <laughs> And then, then you can just throw some colors on them to, to have a selection of objects. Very easy. And then uh, let's, let's go to the, to the alignment stuff. I'm sure you know about the alignment is not so unknown. So when you have one object, the alignment is uh, relative to the page. Uh, center left, left, right. And when you have more objects, Let's take this two. Uh, then alignment is, of course, relative to the objects. So after, after you, you have them aligned uh, vertically too, then they are, of course, uh, on each other. Uh, there are more uh, possibilities to align and to lay out your objects. Of course, I'm sure you know all the, the, the grid, and you can configure it in tools options. So this helps a lot already, but uh, for example, when you want to align your objects uh, along an existing object, and it, does, it, do, it is not uh, uh, directly uh, aligned to the grid, then uh, you can use uh, the helplines. The helplines are very hidden today. They, they were easier accessible in earlier days, but you just uh, go uh, to, the, to the ruler and drag out a helpline and you align it to your object, and all other objects will just snap to the helpline. And you can, you can do as many helplines as you want. You can also add a helpline uh, using the menu, but it's much easier to just drag it out uh, uh, from the ruler, or just drag, drag it back to the ruler if you don't need it anymore. So, uh, also very nice uh, controlled movement using the arrow keys. Much, much underestimated uh, stuff. Because uh, you see I just selected all objects with shift click. I removed the selection from one to go back to one object. And with, with the keyboard you can just travel in uh, defined spaces with shift. You can travel in larger defined spaces. I think it's one centimeter. And with, with shift control, no, with, with alt, you move one pixel. The interesting thing about one pixel is this is uh, zoom dependent. You always you move one pixel. So you can my, make very fine alignments dependent uh, on your zoom. So if you have two objects and, and you really need to fine tune, it's always good to zoom in. And with the Alt key, you can do the small movements. If, if you don't use it, you get the bigger movements. Still, they are not adapted to, this, to the zoom stage. So with, with Alt and, and uh, the uh, cursor keys, you can do a lot of very simple stuff. And for uh, it's very useful, for example, when you need uh, multiple objects. I already showed uh, a very simple way to get multiple objects. Let's, let's just start with a, with a rectangle. So the easiest way is, of course, copy-paste, then uh, not very intuitively. Unfortunately, it's on the same place, so you don't really know that there are two objects. But just use shift and move it, and then you can just uh, control A, control C, control paste, control V, uh, just multiply them. And uh, as you see, with, with the defined uh, fixed space distance travel uh, with the cursor keys, you can quickly arrange a lot of, lot of uh, copies of your object. 
And of course, as I have already shown, uh, you can do the same when you held, hold the control key when, when releasing. So very easy to uh, create a lot of objects. And there's another interesting way to do this. So it's a duplicate dialog, which is a pretty mighty tool. Uh, you can uh, not only duplicate and multiply objects, you can, you can also place them different, you can rotate them. The enlargement is not, very, not so useful because it's very hard to predict the results when you don't really know what internally is happening. So I know what internally is happening, I can predict, but it's also one of the cases where it's not very intuitive uh, but has a lot of potential. Just imagine, I'm, I'm sure you know the insert table tool from the other applications. What, uh, what, what if we would have some interactive thing when one object is selected which works like the insert table and creates your copies? This would, this would be really intuitive. So uh, here I will just make a small example. Uh, you can change the fill color, but not the, uh, the line color. And uh, to have an uh, idea about the placement you need to use to, to have it aligned or to have it aligned uh, with a little bit space, you can look down here at the size of your object, uh, 180 by 180. So let's take two and we will get copies uh, with, with a good distance. And you can, of course, repeat this with multiple, ob multiple objects. It's also 10, maybe, and uh, this time an X. And let's rotate a little bit, and you can, you can quickly create some selections of objects. So this works with all kinds of objects, not, not only rectangles. You can do whatever you, whatever you like. Uh, you, you can uh, make uh, funny, funny stuff when you just take some curves with some line thickness and stuff like that and uh, make a lot of copies. You can, you can make uh, uh, funny uh, uh, just uh, graphic demonstration stuff. Uh, and uh, you can use this later to merge all the objects to have more complicated objects and things like that. Very easy in principle but all well hidden. <laughs> uh, sources of geometries to work with. Um, you all know, of course, uh, the built-in custom shapes. This is already a, a pretty good uh, a source for uh, geometry, for objects, and most of them can be, can be changed somehow, always, always nice. Uh, and the good thing with our office is you can then continue to work with these custom shapes. You don't have to keep them in the, in the uh, state of custom shape. You can just convert them to a curve or to, or, uh, to a polygon to continue working with them geometrically. Then you, you can see uh, now I have this all in curve form and, and can do more than I can do with a yellow button. So it's just a source of geometry which you can use when, when, you, uh, when you see a shape in the custom shapes which is close to what you want to create. Just take it, break it to a, a curve object and then you can freely add it, Com completely free. Um, another good uh, underestimated source for geometry to work with uh, are the fonts. And um, interestingly, you surely know about um, the web fonts, uh, web things and stuff like that. Insert special character, go to web things, use some stuff, insert. And all you need to do is to uh, convert this to curve, make it as big as you need, ungroup, Choose the mode you want to work with it, give it some color, and you, you, can, you can use it as it is or change it as you like. 
Uh, so an another source is the gallery. The gallery is not too well populated. Uh, there could be more, uh, but the, the good thing is you can do your own gallery themes. For example, I can just, um, as you have seen, you need to click and wait a little bit, then you get, get this drag and drop stuff, this drag and drop mouse handle, and then you put it to your gallery if you want to use it later or in another application. So you can, you can just put it back anytime. So you can, you can build your own gallery themes and few people are using it, but, but it's so useful. <laughs> uh, of course, drag and drop from the, from the web browser or other programs also working. Uh, okay, I, I feared I can show only part of it. <laughs> so convert to curve polygon contour. Uh, combined break uh, object sculpturing. I call this object sculpturing uh, because what you really can do with the office is some incredible stuff like um, you, you can just cut out stuff of the object uh, you work on with subtracti subtracting it. You can, you can check uh, in, po in point mode that uh, it's done with a very high quality, all the curve elements stay, so it's not just converted to a, to a dump polygon without curve elements. And this allows you uh, to really sculpture with, with your objects. You, for example, you can, you can just make you, yourself a help object uh, like this, take this, Subtract it, and, and then you can just use the edge you, you produced. Uh, where is it? Shapes, subtract to get a clean round edge. So you can sculpture your geometry as you need. You, you, you don't even need to work on the low-level curves if you like. You can, you can just use the subtraction stuff and things like that. Very mighty. Uh, when, when you want to do it even faster, you can use the freeform line, do whatever shape you want. Oops. Just subtract and you, you are done. Yeah. So, uh, just to give you an to give you an overview, there's also some stuff uh, about working with contour geometries. It's about extracting the contour of curves or shapes and reuse them as new shape. And uh, you can iterate this process to get lines and lines and lines, which which can be uh, very interesting. Uh, the rest. I will have to show to people who are interested in. Just ask me. There are, there are, some, there are some more points uh, which, which uh, are too much now for this short presentation, but I, I hope I could give you an impression uh, what is all available and that it is too hidden and we need to take action to make it more intuitively available because it's made mighty stuff. Okay, thank you.